review and thoughts 78 the boys from Brazil now I start this video with a review with zero spoilers but as soon as I end the review itself please note that the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers including discussing the ending and please note that while I am aware that many people have watched this movie this review will be based on the idea that you haven't so a an aging Nazi hunter is looking into a conspiracy that involves Nazis that escaped prosecution. The, the writing of this is perfectly fine, basically. I mean, there are a few big problems, but along the way, a lot of it is basically fine. The movie more or less delivers what you would expect from just like knowing the, the genre and such. Although I think some people list this as sci-fi. It's really only barely sci-fi. Now this has a decent enough opening and like the early sections you know, it does go into the, the whole conspiracy thing from right away, really. And, I mean, it depends on if you're the... This is going to sound insulting. I really don't mean it to be. If this is your kind of thing, I think the opening will grab you fairly effectively. And the... Yeah, the ending is interesting i will i will discuss it a little later in the review without spoilers and i think it does a perfectly decent job of keeping your interest along the way i think the movie's just shy of two hours before the end credits start and yeah for that it is you know decent i there were a couple of times along the way where i started to feel like you know, are t is is it starting to lose its focus? But then, not many minutes later, it would f you know forward the plot or build some kind of you know provide important information and such. And I do think that it is you know if you come into this not knowing the ending. It's, you know, a decent enough, like, little bit of, you know, if you, if you try to figure out what is going on before the reveal, you know, you, you do get a lot of pieces of the puzzle. I cannot speak to whether or not it's a good adaptation. I've never read Ira Levin, including this book. Now, the, the character's... It's, it's a bit of a... Um, there are some kind of uncomfortable things about the, the characters. Some of the Jewish characters are stereotyped with some very ugly anti-Semitic tropes. And there's a really... There's, there's way too much of Ezra Lieberman. And yes, I realize the character's old, the actor's old. But they really lean way too heavily into old guy stereotypes with him. And he can be kind of a an annoying and, and frustrating main character. Which I don't think that's always a bad thing. But I don't think this movie means for him to be frustrating. I think it's just it doesn't realize how he comes off looking. And that's... It's not a huge problem, but it does hamper one's, you know, when I sat down to watch this, I mean, I was, I was totally up for it. I wanted to enjoy the movie, and to an extent I did, but it definitely, it could have been a lot more, yeah. And there are... Yeah, there, there are characters who just, 
they have some traits that are really just it can be kind of hard to understand where they're coming from and again I don't think it's supposed to and there's a there's way too much it's it again it got uncomfortable how many people in this talk you know the, the movies from 1978 and based on a book from I want to say 1976 so yes you know World War two had been over for 30 years but it's really uncomfortable just how many characters in this talk about oh you know Nazis that was so long ago one character even implies that the Nazi war crimes might even be blown out of proportion like was it really that bad and it's just I'm not I'm aware that there were people even back then you know there's probably more today I, I don't know for sure but even back then there were people who were calling into question whether it really happened or if it did happen whether it was that bad but it just feels odd for a movie like this which seems like it should be entirely on the side of anyone who hates Nazis for it to express have, have so many characters express this this kind of doubt and the movie doesn't really explore it either which would help a lot to make it less troubling and I suppose I also felt like there were there's an odd amount of people not really believing other people who are on their side and it kind of seemed like it was just I don't know I guess to fill time or I guess probably to create a sense of conflict and it's it's a movie of course there's supposed to be conflict but it just felt very it felt like they couldn't come up with a good conflict so they decided to just have characters not believe the really obvious like one of the first things is that Lieberman you know at the start of the movie Lieberman hasn't yet started investigating and one of the first things we see is him being contacted by someone he doesn't know and he's told there are Nazis in Brazil and they're doing something and Ezra Lieberman I, I realize that I'm restating but he's a Nazi hunter so it seems like he should jump at the opportunity and I really can't I having watched the entire movie I can't see any in movie explanation for it the only explanation I can really that I feel holds water here is that they needed there to be some conflict you know they which which again is just odd because the the conspiracy itself and attempts to uncover it I feel like that should be enough conflict anyway and the acting oh boy the acting okay not all of it is bad some of it is perfectly serviceable this has some of the best actors in the history of cinema Lawrence Sir Lawrence Olivier and Gregory Peck in impeccable just incredible talent I don't know what possessed them to play their roles like this I've read suggestions you know some said that you know Peck playing Josef Mengele he wanted to to really go for a villain role so he just throws himself into it full force I, I saw one person say it was borderline satire the way he plays the role and yeah Sir Lawrence Olivier I've, I've seen him in a number of other things I've seen him in movies where he was supposed to be embarrassed I don't think I've ever felt as bad for him as I did while watching this because it's just yeah I mean at least it's a lot of great actors in their you know once they get 
up in years, some get on in years, whatever. Once they're a little bit older, they start getting roles that are not very flattering. And, you know, unfortunately this, yeah, this, this is one. But at the same time, you know, he was also in the original Sleuth. And there he does an absolutely incredible job. I and mean, really showed that he still had immense talent. And just, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And I think that, yeah, you know, some of the performances are just slightly off. And it's like, I don't understand that acting decision, but okay. And I think that pretty well covers that. Now, yes, I like to, in these reviews, try to go into the, the concept. Now, I can't really detail it without spoiling. But I do think it is worth noting, I'm not really aware of that many other stories that have this concept. I, I'm aware of ones that have... That, that maybe start from the same original, you know, they, they share a starting point, but they go in different ways as, as far as the conclusion, and yeah, not gonna lie, I don't know very many movies that have this concept. So, you know, that brings up, of course, was it, you know, so, so there's not really, you know, I try to judge, has it been done better before? And not to my knowledge, no, but was it worth making? I'm going to go into why in the spoiler sections, but ultimately I understand the, the drive to do a story based on this concept. But I do think, I think ultimately it was a mistake. Sometimes I'm sure the, the, it was, it was something that, really resonated you know not not as much anymore for reasons i won't spoil here but i yeah i think sometimes you should just not once you once you make a story once you make a, a book or a movie or the like based on a story that some people are already thinking could this really be you know you you kind of lend it an air of legitimacy, and I don't think that was a good idea in, in this case. The cinematography is it's it's fine. I wouldn't say that it it's like groundbreaking, but it's it's perfectly serviceable and and competent. And the editing is fairly good again not groundbreaking stuff but when it's supposed to be tense and suspenseful it is when it's supposed to be like dramatic and i hesitate to say scary but unsettling it is now I wouldn't say that this is a very special effects heavy movie. I think I think it was a good thing that it's not very special effects heavy. What effects there are are pretty good. And the stunt work is quite good and I think again the the right amount of it. And let's see. So yeah. Once the protagonist becomes involved, which does happen fairly early on, it's just, it feels like a really long time with the delay, but no, he does get involved fairly early on. From then on out, he is fairly driven, and we are basically, you know, we want the, so we want this mystery solved as well. And the, yeah. Dr. Mengele as the antagonist. He does make for a pretty decent, like, you you really despise him. And we, we, we are meant to. We're, we're meant to love to hate him. That doesn't excuse the performance, 
but the yeah, that's still now let's see. So the music and score is is fine. Uh, it gets the job done. And yeah, so as far as genres and subgenres. You know, how well does it fare in the entry into the genres it fits into? It makes for a pretty decent, like, cons you know, 70s conspiracy thriller. You know, it has what, it has more or less what you would expect of one, and, yeah, it is a, a pretty decent, you know, it keeps your interest, and, yeah. And, let's see. Right, so yeah, violence and other things that relate to the age rating, and whether there's too much of it, if it's appropriate, and it serves a purpose. There's, there's not as much violence as you might think. And I would say the, the amount is pretty appropriate for what those scenes are trying to get across. Tone. Tone is a is a big one here. And it's kind of it's it's a bit of a make or break kind of thing. Once you realize what this movie is about, it's no longer if it ever were. It's no longer very easy to take it seriously. Unfortunately, no one told the movie that. Because it takes itself way too seriously. And this is the kind of concept that you could have some fun with. But this is not the movie that has fun with the concept. This is, this is the movie that thinks it's deadly serious. And I swear, I'm, I'm judging this based on what it would feel like to watch it when it first came out. It's... I'm not expecting this movie to, you know... The, Let's see, what is this? 42 years old. I'm not expecting the movie to have the same effect on me today that it did back then. You know, so... But no, it, it's, it takes it completely seriously, plays it completely seriously. And it's the kind of thing where you can, you can have some fun with that, that it's, it's kind of the, like... Is it... Let me think. You can watch it as an unintentional parody of itself. One one of the parodies that plays things seriously, you know, like you know, parts of Airplane, for example. The original Airplane plays certain things very straightforward, and the. I think it's for those people who do want to take this concept seriously, I don't think the movie taking itself as seriously as it does completely serves that purpose. I think there should have been a couple of self-aware little jokes. And I, there were a couple of times where it felt like the movie got close, but it never quite stuck the landing. Now, is the movie generic, unique, or somewhere in between? I think it's it's somewhere in between. Again, the concept is somewhat unique. It's not... Yeah, the... the I, I wouldn't quite say it's generic in the way that it handles the... the for example, the mystery elements. But it's not quite unique either. So, best scene or element, and would it be worth watching the movie at least once just to experience that? Honestly, I think it is probably, it's probably the ending, or possibly the twist reveal, which 
Yeah, I think it's a tie between those two. Would it be worth watching the movie? I wouldn't... I mean, if you... Like, I already... I, I think... I think my dad bought this DVD years ago, so I borrowed it from him. I didn't have to pay anyone money to watch this. If you can watch it and it doesn't cost you money, like if you have a streaming service that it appears on, and you know you don't feel like you got a better use for those two hours, you know, yeah, I think it might be worth watching at least once for for the ending and for the twist reveal. Which brings me to the worst aspect, and my answer to that is the same. It's the ending and the twist reveal that are by far the worst. Like, ultimately, the twist is supported by the movie up to that point. It's not one of those out-of-the-blue twists. It's something that you can piece together once you have all the, you know, which is also one of the problems, unfortunately, before the movie itself reveals the twist, you might be able to figure out the, the twist. And that's going off the assumption that you didn't know it. I, I could imagine a lot of people found this movie knowing the twist. Because that is, you know, once again, today, so many years later, that's, the twist is kind of the selling point. This this is not a movie that I would recommend. Like, if you're a big fan of Sir Lawrence Olivier or Gregory Peck, I mean, I guess if you want to see them, you know, do, do, you know, give, give these kinds of performances, okay, I guess, you know, but, like... I'm probably going to go watch a much better Sir Lawrence Olivier movie after this to, to, you know, rinse the memory out. Excuse me. I, it's, it's not... If, if you want to see them in a, you know, doing well, then this probably isn't the movie that you want to watch. And, yeah, anyway, the, the twist... It's definitely supported by the rest of the movie. It doesn't. It doesn't contradict what came before. It doesn't feel like it. We're, we're suddenly watching a different movie. No, the twist is where the movie was going. And the movie before you re, before the reveal before the twist is yeah. You. The movie is perfectly serviceable up to that point. Once you see the twist, it, it becomes very difficult to take, it, it, even more difficult to take the movie seriously. Like, if you watch this and you, like, pay half attention, then the movie might work okay for you, you know. But if you watch it and you try really hard to take it seriously, you know, I've already given some examples of what works against that, and... Once the twist is revealed, it really becomes completely impossible. And once again, I do want to say, this is not me judging it all these years later. No, the, the, I'm sorry, but it was a ridiculous twist at the time. Once again, I get that it was a story that a lot of people were, like, thinking. You know, they, the movie says what a lot of people were thinking, but, yeah, I already covered that. No, once once you know the twist, yeah, it it really just it becomes basically impossible to to take seriously. Now, let's see. So, what was I most worried about, and did the movie live down to my expectations or exceed them? I would say it was better produced than I thought it would. Once again, I knew the twist going in because that's. I'm not sure very many people today watch the movie. You know, like like hypothetically, there there are well, yeah, hypothetically, if this was one of the movie classics, you might go into it not knowing the, the twist, but it's not. It's kind of infamous for the twist and the performances and such, but there isn't really but but yeah. It was better produced than I thought. And, I mean, it tries, I didn't, 
I don't think I expected it to take itself as seriously as it did. And what was I most looking forward to? I was hoping for good performances from Olivier and Peck, and the movie did not live up to the, the movie failed to live up to my expectations there. Now, apparently there are a couple of, there's at least two different versions of this. I would go for the one that has the most content because it is, I, I would say the, all of the, you know, the, the content that was cut from, for some of the releases, for at least one release, I, I would say that material does, it makes it better to still have that. And, yeah, so, was the movie worth making? See, I... No, ultimately, I, I don't think so. And, yeah, so, would I recommend the work of the... Uh, yeah, you know, if, you, if... Please don't make this the first movie you watch with, with these actors, because they're much, much better. I, but yeah, you know, the, the, you know, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Gregory Peck, and James Mason, I would definitely watch other work by. Now, who would I, and who wouldn't I recommend this to? I think if you're really big on 70s conspiracy thrillers, you know, and the the concept appeals to you, which again I'm trying to not spoil before I get into the spoiler sections. I'll tell you what, I'll make it the first thing I spoil. What, the moment I start the spoiler section, I'll spoil it, and then you can figure out if that's what you want. But if you if one of those two isn't like if you do like the idea of the twist but you actually heh, if you like the idea of the twist but you don't like 70s conspiracy thrillers i think you'll find a lot of the movie to not be that engaging or entertaining you know this is i've i've watched other conspiracy thrillers from the 70s and you know yeah I, I am a fan of the subgenre, and I don't think that, you know, es especially by today, but, yeah, if, you, if you're not into, yeah. Now, a rating, okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, I guess, ultimately, it's a 5. It would be higher if not for the twist and the ending. Hypothetically, if somehow the twist and the ending were different from the movie, from from the, how it is, how they are in the movie now, I think it would end on a seven. And that does, in fact. That's it for the spoiler-free section. From here on out, there will be spoilers. So the twist is, it turns out that Mengele is trying to recreate the third... He, he's... yeah. He's trying to make a new Hitler, and he's using cloning to do it. And, yeah, I'm, I might go more into detail about that later in this video. But, yeah, that's all I'll say for, for right now. That's, that's the twist, and that right there is a big... You know, that really... Is, is the movie actually for you or not? A lot of that has to do with how you react to that twist. So, disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers, I'll try to keep them short and relevant, but your mileage may vary. You can skip right ahead to the section of your choice via the description box. I try to talk very fast during the disclaimers, since a lot of it is very standard information. 
I'm not going to keep speaking this fast once I get to the video. Excuse me, the rest of the video itself. And yeah, so let's see. I already mentioned that the rest of the video contains spoilers. I am only spoiling this. I'm not going to be spoiling like other work by the filmmakers or actors or such. Or if I do, I will warn before and like raise a finger during so you can skip ahead until you see me lower the finger to avoid the spoilers. And yeah, so content warning and or trigger warning. I'm sorry, I have a hard time understanding the distinction, but I do really want to, I do really respect how necessary the terms are and I want to cover my bases. I am going to be discussing the potentially triggering content of this movie, eugenics, Nazism, and unethical medical experience. Experiment. Sorry? Experiments. My mouth decided to mutiny there at the end of that word. I don't have a problem with violence and gore in general. The thing is one of my favorite horror movies and movies in general. I also love Cronenberg's The Fly, Videodrome, etc. Personally, I don't think it's wrong to put violence in fiction, except for the following exceptions. If it could encourage xenophobia, or if it could make people think that violence is a solution, there are almost no problems that it solves in real life. And really, most of the movie, the violence is done by the bad guys. You know, there really is... There, there at the end, I think we're probably supposed to find it... Ah, what's the word? Take, take some satisfaction in seeing Mengele mauled to death by dogs. And... But, but you know, the Ezra is the the protagonist, and there at the end of the movie, he specific, you know, he says, you know, I realize that these these kids, these ninety four kids, are all clones of Hitler. I'm not going to kill them, and I'm not going to let you kill them either. Now, I don't have a problem with disturbing and upsetting material in general. Monsters are my favorite movies. And I might swear some in this video. So, you know, I might, I might quote it, for example. And let's see. Right. So, yeah, the following is a short list supplied by the IMDb more like this list of movies that are similar to this. Some I think highly of, some I think very little of, and some I might compare it to without, and yeah, I already mentioned about spoilers, so yeah, I'm sorry, some of these are a little weird, so I'm just briefly going to say, for some reason, okay, I did, not for, obviously, the reason is obvious, they share a title, but I don't necessarily think it's that useful, I guess maybe it's in case someone open this movie on IMDb expecting the other one. This more like this list on IMDb links to Boys from Brazil 1993. No the and no the different year of release. It's about LGBTQ plus prostitutes in Brazil. I don't know very much about the subject, but it is something, you know, there are definitely it is worth knowing about. It is worth making a movie going into. It really doesn't have anything to do with this movie other than the title. But anyway, yeah, so... Yeah, most of these I am not familiar with. But, you know, if you recognize one of these titles, maybe that'll give you an idea of what this movie is like if you watch to this segment of the video and you haven't watched the movie itself. Marathon Man from 1976, The Odessa from 1974, The Day of the Jackal from 1973, which I gave an 8 out of 10. Today I might give it a 9. It's it's an incredible movie. If you're going to watch either this movie or that movie, watch that movie. But don't watch the I, 1998, I want to say, Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, garbage version of the... Yeah, anyway. MacArthur, 1977. Misty Voices, The Story of the Pequot War, which is a TV movie from 2004. Sleuth from 1972, once again, not the 
2000-something garbage version. I hate saying that about something starring Michael Caine and directed by Kenneth Branagh, but I'm sorry that... Anyway, the original is incredible. And, you know, the obvious link is Sir Lawrence Olivier starring in both. Patton from 1970, The Omen from 1976, Welcome Home 1989, Sphinx 1981, and The Boys from Brazil, the, the remake, I think, of this or something. It's, it's listed as not done yet, which makes me not entirely sure how they can know how similar the two are going to be, but whatever. So, yeah, I record this as soon as I can get to the computer after watching the movie. Excuse me. And, yeah, so the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it is analysis, some of it is MST3A riff tracks and other jokes. I, ultimately, I'm probably not going to make that many jokes because, the, you know, it is ultimately a fairly... <sighs> Yeah, you know, the the idea of Hitler clones is fiction and ultimately kind of ridiculous. But the movie is also about real Nazi war criminals. You know, Mengele is the main antagonist. So, yeah. Anyway, I, you know, thoughts that I had while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary or live, live tweeting or the like. And the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. And then the final section I get into stuff I think it's worthwhile to get into on Rotten Tomatoes from Metacritic, I'm reading it at Wikipedia. And The movie doesn't really have empathy for the least likable characters, such as Mengele. He is, without any question, the villain. There is no humanizing scene for him. And I do think that is the right choice. I, you know, yeah, he doesn't deserve empathy. I, I tend not to... I... I I feel almost everyone deserves empathy, but Nazi war criminals do not. And it's one of the few. Yeah. Now, I try not to review films that fall into genres that I don't like. And I do want to make, I'm, I'm probably going to be saying a lot of negative things. I already have said a bunch of negative things about this movie. In this video and I just want to make clear I didn't go into this intending to hate it the idea of a, a movie that has Mengele continuing you know it, since the movie came out we have found positive confirmation that he was living in, I forget if it was Brazil but it was definitely one of, you know it was that general region of the world and, yeah, when the book was written and the movie was made, there was a pretty strong, you know, peop the people who would know were fairly sure that he probably went to South America. And the idea of him continuing experiments and, and such, you know, I think there is something there. You could make something compelling out of that. And if not for the ridiculous twist then I might and I I get that this is something that Mengele might have tried to do if he was you know I think he was probably too much in hiding you know if he if he actually did try to do this kind of stuff he might get caught by the people who were trying to catch him and, you know see that he faced justice and yeah i i have more to say about that but i have pre-written notes later in this so let's see, let's see. Uh, 
Um, Yeah, so once again, you know, I'm able to watch this movie because my dad bought the DVD and let me borrow it. So I haven't spent money to watch this. So anything negative I say in this video is not out of bitterness. I also do not feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. And it's not that I'm upset at how it compares to other adaptations of Ira Levin work, such as, in my opinion, far superior Rosemary's Baby. I love that movie. I don't love this movie. I am not going to judge this movie based on it not being that movie. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I say in this are fair criticisms based on budget, when it came out, what it was trying to achieve, etc. I first watched this in the year 2009, and I think this is the first viewing since then. Now. And, yeah, so. That. Is. It for this section. Which brings us to the second. Notes taken while watching. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say to the first chunk of the movie that I didn't put in the review itself. But I appreciate that we do briefly see Mengele performing more of the experiments, injecting blue dye into the eyes of the kid, you know, the movie makes the effort to not only mention that this was something Mengele did, but we also see that he's still doing that in 1978. And I also, I appreciate that it actually lays out some of the most important and attention, you know, grabbing things of the, the conspiracy from pretty much right away. I think it's maybe five minutes into the movie that we hear about the the assassinations of 94 you know men and and the you know the audience Mengele's you know fellow Nazis and you know not Lieberman doesn't know right away but Kohler does and he pretty quickly gets the information to Lieberman so yeah. And yeah, and and Mrs. Dor Miss Mrs. whatever. Doring's adopted son. I I'm afraid I forget his name. It seems to really want Ezra to kill the Nazis he finds. So we see that this supposed future Hitler does already think very little of human lives. And, you know, Doreen refers to him as being terribly lazy, which is something that the real Hitler was. And personally, I don't, I don't like the word lazy, but I don't know a good word to express, you know. Yeah, I'll just very briefly state, basically, what people, when people look at a person or, yeah, any kind of individual and say they are lazy, you know, usually it's that what what is really going on is that they're unmotivated. They, you know, one one or more of the following: unmotivated, depressed, anxious, unsure of how to accomplish the thing they're being called lazy for not accomplishing. Maybe they feel that if they did it, that would actually hurt people, not help. You know, there are a lot of of reasons for that kind of thing and it's really unfortunate that people say lazy in, instead of but I'm afraid I don't know a better word to, if you do please put it in the comments one one that doesn't refer to yeah let's see 
and I will say the you know when we find out that you know it's, I, is it a dam? I want to say it's like a dam or or something like that. The two Nazis are just you know talking about you know, one one of them says you have to follow orders and the other is like you know and then we it's revealed that the you know he was there to kill the the, the other guy he wasn't there to kill the the teacher. I think the the kid playing the Hitler clones does a decent job with you know they they have different accents and use different words and and such you know and uh, there is a little difference to to how they talk to to others some of them are more like some of them really shut down the other person where some of them are more, you know, start having conversations with the other person they're talking to and such. But, yeah, and, and there is that, I, I will say, the, the cinematographer has some inspired shots. And the, the it really, when, when, when he stands, when, when the kid stands next to the mirrors, and you see this long line of them, hinting at them being clones that's very nicely done there's there's a yeah and i think the the scene where i want to say bruno ganz who plays hitler in downfall explains to lieberman and the audience about the cloning it's a pretty decent scene and it does do a good job of like it, it fills in the last few puzzle pieces, you know, now, now we know enough to be able to, and, and, you know, but by the end of the scene, you know, Lieberman has realized, you know, yeah, that's, this is what, this is what Mengele is doing. He's cloning people and he's cloning Hitler because he already saw the kids and he knows, you know, the, the, and they've gone over what all the the adoptive parents have in common so he can you know yeah you know like i said in the review by then you've probably already figured out you know i in 1978 i think people probably did i think in 1978 before the scene of the explanation Audiences might have thought, but is that really possible, though? Could it, you know, but people's, people did know what cloning was. It just wasn't, I, f I forget, are we at the stage where hypothetically we could clone human beings? I'm not entirely sure. I think the, the main reason that it's not being done is the, the ethical concerns, which I will get into a little later in this video. And let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will say that the dogs, you know, near the end barking, and you know, once the once Mengele shoots the the dog breeder, some of them are like trying to bite at the the fence area to to get out. You know, it builds tension pretty well. Excuse me. You know, a lot of people have criticized the the dogs. I'm not gonna not criticize the. I I agree. It's it's you know. Someone said the the movie literally goes to the dogs at the end. It's difficult because I really don't think if hypothetically if the movie did end with Lieberman killing Mengele, I don't think that would completely work as. You know, he, Lieberman does say that, he, you know, he says to the, that one Hitler clone who wants him to kill the Nazis, he says, no, 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 I, I, it would be illegal. I capture them and then they get put on trial. And I don't think that would have been a good ending for the movie. I don't think Mengele on trial would have worked that well. So on one hand, 
you know, on, on the one hand, you can't have Lieberman kill him, because that just wouldn't work quite well. It's... And on the other hand, he can't survive the scene, so you do need something, you know, and... Yeah. But it, it definitely... Is. I, and, you know, there, there is that... One of the things is that you are... He dies in a very brutal way. He dies in a way that, you know, you, usually we say that no human being deserves to die like that. You know, the... the although, I, the, I suppose, if you're in favor of the death penalty, maybe you don't think it, it's bad. If, if you're in favor of something like the, the electric chair, then you probably don't think, you know... I don't know. Uh, yeah, the electric chair is probably more painful than, than than dying by dogs. But it seems a very, it, you know, it, it seems like the kind of thing that usually isn't used on human beings. You know, it, it seems like it's below the dignity of a human being to be killed by dogs like that. And obviously, there is a, you know, part of the idea here is he was a monster. And he was, 100%. No doubt about it. One of history's greatest monsters, Dr. Mangala. So let's have him die in a way that is monstrous, basically. You know, the, the, what he did to, to his fellow men were was was just inhuman so the yeah you know and yeah so i don't know i don't know how you end the movie in a way that isn't yeah but yeah that that covers that and I like the, the 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 fact that Bobby comes in and he takes pictures of them before he tries to save either of them from the dogs, you know, and the the detail that when he orders the dogs, print means attack and cut means stop. So you know, the the kind of language you use as a photographer. Now, yeah, so the movie is an hour and 57 and a half minutes long without end credits and just under two hours with end credits. Yeah, this is, this section came out really short. Because I said so much of it in the review. Notes taken before watching. So, I am just quickly going to talk about about. Yeah, ultimately, I guess I haven't seen Gregory Peck in that much. In 1991, Cape Fear, To Kill a Mockingbird, Moby Dick from 1956, and Spellbound. And yeah, but you know, in those movies, his performances are much, much better. And, yeah, among, I don't think this is everything I've seen Lawrence, Sir Lawrence Olivier in, but, the, the, you know, these are the ones that I for sure know that I've seen him in. Sleuth, Spartacus, the, the 1960 version, which is excellent, by the way. The 1948 Hamlet, which is amazing, by the way. And Rebecca, which... I'm, I'm running out of synonyms. Incredible. Movie. Excuse me. Now, the following is one of the first things that I noted for doing this video, and one of the main reasons that I wanted to do a video on this movie. Once again, I, the first time I watched it was 2009. Back then, I wasn't doing... Let's see, I wasn't doing videos on movies that weren't currently in cinemas, I think, back then. And the idea to do a video on it, you know, 
is much more recent, but yeah. I think it's very much to this movie's detriment that the core idea is exactly what Hitler would love to have been told. to Yeah, to have told about him after his death for this to be part of his legacy. Obviously, the text of the movie is saying that it would be a horrible thing if Hitler came back, which is 100% obviously correct, unless it would allow us to put him on trial, rather than letting him have the easy out of... You know, I, I don't think that suicide is automatically the easy way out, but in this case, it was. We know that the reason Hitler committed suicide wasn't that he was like... The reason was that he didn't want to be humiliated the way that, ah, crap, I'm sorry, his name escapes, the, the, Mussolini, Mussolini was humiliated when he was captured, and Hitler was terrified of that happening to him, and that's why, you know, so, anyway, you know, and obviously if you believe he went to hell, then it wasn't that easy to out, and you know, if you believe hell exists, you probably do think that he went to hell. God, I hope so. I don't personally believe in heaven or hell. However, however, what however, however what, however, the idea that a clone of Hitler would have the same attributes as the actual Hitler is exactly what he did believe. The movie isn't saying that Hitler is genetically superior, but it does go along with his beliefs that genetics is a viable way to predict how someone will turn out, how he would have done it. And I realize that the movie does, you know, also acknowledge that, you know, it would also require for other things to be the same. So, you know, the, the thing with the, the father being so much older and dying when the, the kid is fairly young and, you know, these, these kinds of things, but... Yeah, I, th I think I'll get more into that, but for now, what I feel would really stick it to Hitler would be if clone Hitler came out completely differently, and it was a huge frust frustration to the scientists. You don't have to go as far as Mel Brooks did with the producers. Simply have clone hu Hitler be hugely different from real Hitler, and let's Yeah, and you know, when the when the movie when the book and movie were made, we already knew that genetics really wasn't as reliable a predictor of how people turn out as Hitler zealously believed it was. You know, the the yeah, the movie itself states twins can be hugely different from each other. And Yeah, you know, the the I don't want to say that the movie thinks, but certainly Mengele in the movie seems to think that basically all that's needed is the older father who's abusive to the, the kid and the, the mother to be doting and for the father to die when the kid is 14. You know, there, there are a lot of things missing and I'm not sure if the movie and, and novel realize that you know, Hitler was in part successful because of when and where he was, and he would not have been able to be successful if not for, for example, the political conditions of Germany when he was young. So you, you can't just... Again, I, I get that the movie is saying that Mengele is, you know, the, the his ideas are not... He's, he's incorrect, and he's basically, I'm trying to think of a word, of a, basically a synonym for, for crazy that isn't ableist. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm trying to be better at avoiding using these words that, excuse me, have this kind of baggage, but it's a work in progress, but the... I guess what I'm asking for is for the movie to do much more to disprove the, 
you know, the, the hypothesis, because it really is that, it, again, it's so frustrating when people focus so much on Hitler personally, when Hitler was a monster. I'm not making excuses for him. The thing is that the reason he was successful was the, the lack of faith in the German democracy. The, the, the Great Depression, you know, there, there are major factors, and it would be much more beneficial to focus on those factors instead, you know, the, the, there are, I'm going to try not to, to get, no, no, never mind, I'm not going there. But yeah, you know, there are ethical arguments against cloning, cloning humans, but one of them isn't someone might clone Hitler. You know, obviously it would be a bad thing if Hitler were cloned and thus brought back to life, but that the problem there isn't the cloning. I mean, that's that's like saying, uh, let's see, yeah, that's that's like saying, you know, pointing to a um, an arsonist and saying he wouldn't have been able to do what he did if not for matches and lighters. So let's destroy all the matches and lighters in the world. That doesn't make sense. It's part of it is the intention, you know, the the, and it just. Once it, once the movie gets there, once it's like, I don't know, is Pearl clutching the right term? It's, it's like, it's, you know, oh no, what about cloning? If it, it comes off as one of those terrible, like, 60s, beware of this, you know, scientific breakthrough, you know, sci-fi horror movies. You know, it reminds me of, like, that movie that was actually on MST3K because it was that bad. Ah, let me think. The brain that wouldn't die, maybe was it that? What is it called? With the with the woman who gets her head cut off in like a car accident, and then a scientist like it keeps her alive. And it's like, I mean, since that movie was made, people have survived things. Not that you know, obviously, but. People have survived some really extreme things, and I just can't help but wonder, like, you know, I'm, I'm guessing people who, like, did survive parts of them, like, you know, they, they probably don't love that movie, and, and it just feels like, I, I get it, I get that people were really anxious about the idea of, you know, but maybe don't make a movie out, it just really, yeah. Because that's not the that's not the bad thing. The the there can be some you know, to be fair, the brain that wouldn't die does acknowledge that one of the things that would happen is that the the person surviving might become very bitter. And that is something you know, I d I don't I'm not gonna sit here and decide whether or not it's it's right or wrong. I think it's I think it's a good thing. I know that there are some some countries where you can basically sign, you know, yeah, sign a thing that says, you know, what, what's it called? Do, do not resuscitate. You know, if you bringing me back to life means that I might live on with, excuse me, but, but so, you know, with, with less ability than before, then don't bring me back to life. You know, I think that's important to have. I'm not going to tell anyone whether they should sign or not sign something like that, but it's it's just ultimately the the movie. Excuse me, that movie in that movie, that scientist is the stereotypical mad scientist. He's doing things he shouldn't be doing, and that's just the wrong thing to say about something like that. It's not inherently wrong to, to yeah. And again, if it was a serious discussion of the issues, then I would, 
you know, then then I would grade the movie based on whether it did a good job of the, you know, but that discussion not, doesn't even really come up because it's just trying to scare people with imagine if people lived in this way, which is like, I think I might at some point make a, a long video just talking about all the, yeah, honestly, Renegade Cut has made a couple of videos about how some of these things, so I forget the titles right now, unfortunately. Anyway, the ethical issues with cloning. Let's see, I copied in some stuff. Let's see. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the really big ethical concerns with cloning is the idea of harvesting organs from clones and thus we would make you know we would create life purely for spare parts you know that's that's really that's deeply unethical and Now, let's see. It's possible that people didn't know the following when the book was written and the movie was made, so I'm not going to hold them to account for that. But I do want to make it absolutely clear that the vast majority of what Joseph Mengele did in Auschwitz, what he called scientific experiments, did not in fact produce anything even remotely useful. So something a book or movie like this could have done, once again, if, you know, I'm not saying this move, this should have done it because I'm not, I tried, but I'm not that good at researching. I wasn't really able to find when people knew. But, you know, hypothetically, if some, if a, maybe, maybe there already are, and I just don't know of them, or if one was made today, a book or movie, to mock or confront Mengele could be to point out just how unscientific most of what he did was. You know, have the Nazi hunter confront him directly with the words, I realize that the nearly limitless suffering you inflicted upon your subjects will never cause you to have a guilty conscience. But it must burn that deep down you know as I do that your supposed research led to no useful scientific data. You had plenty of access to subject and equipment, and you're such a failure that you produced nothing with it. And again, I do want to, I, maybe I, yeah, I'm not sure I really gave the movie enough credit yet, so I do want to say I really appreciate that they do have Lieberman really detail some of the horrible things that Mengele did. You know, I, I think it's when he's talking to the, the journalist, excuse me, the, the guy who works at Reuters, you know, that, I, I really appreciate that, you know, a, a, a lesser film might not have included that, or might have made stuff up, but as far as I know, everything he said when he was talking to, every single thing he mentioned, Mengele doing, Mengele actually did. You know, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea when talking about these things to exaggerate because if you tell someone you know let, yeah let's say that you're you're talking to a young person who don't he, a young man who doesn't yet know if you know he, he doesn't yet know the details of what Hitler did and you say some things and you exaggerate some of the details if then he confronts an actual Nazi and says but Hitler did this and this and then the Nazi says no, he didn't, and here's the proof that he didn't. Then the, the young man might wonder if everything he's been told about Hitler was a lie. If maybe, you know, the moment that you have to exaggerate what your opponent does is, you know, you're basically admitting inadvertently that what your opponent did wasn't bad enough that 
you can't just, you know, you, you feel like you, you can't win an argument without exaggerating the bad they did. And just, yeah. Excuse me. That sure is a long way to fall for that one Nazi that pushed off the, what's it called? It's like a, it's like big and it stops the movement of water. Oh, damn. near the very end of the movie you have the I'm afraid I forget his name but the, the yeah the the guy who searches for the the list of the names and then you know Lieberman burns it yeah you know he's the this this guy is saying that he wants to go around killing these I want to say 94 14-year-old boys who have not themselves intentionally done anything wrong. I don't know if that's, like, supposed to say that, you know, that, I think, I don't know if that's supposed to make some kind of equivocation saying that he's just as bad as the Nazis, that just, that's really messed up. And, you know, even if that is not the intended message of the scene, obviously some people are going to perceive it that way. Now, let's see. What does that say? Yeah, anyway, the... I, I understand the the... I've seen other movies try to say that the enemies of Nazis could be as bad as Nazis. I really don't think that it's... The problem is that one of the things with the Nazis is that some of their ideas can take hold in the minds of some people so we have to focus on how those ideas are bad because if we if we talk about what Nazis did and then say well other people have wanted to do the same thing hypothetically if you know if if the the if there were some Jews that were killing Nazis, I'm going to try not to bring up Glorious Bastards here, but yeah, you know, if, if they were, that's not the same thing. You know, one, one of the reasons that the Nazis were as effective as they were, were that the government of an entire country and the army of that country, the military of that country were behind the Nazis, you know. So the idea of like a, a group of Jews on their own killing a bunch of Nazis, that in that doesn't make them the same as the Nazis. So yeah, it's just really. I really think it was it was. I I don't think that element should have been included in the movie at all. And you didn't need a character to represent that viewpoint. You could have just had Lieberman say, I don't think anyone, you know, I, th I think these 94 boys deserve peace. And then he burns the list so that no one can, you know, do anything. Which I, ultimately, I think it may be, just like, I don't know, it's, obviously they shouldn't be killed. I don't think that, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I'm 
just going to go ahead and move on. Some people seem to think that it was a good thing that the movie was made at a time when there was a chance that Dr. Mengele would be found. And personally, I think it makes it all the more tasteless. Like, hypothetically, if the movie was made today, you know, 40 years after his actual death, it would be better than it being made at a time when they were actively looking for him. You know, the wounds were still fresh. I personally don't mind that Gregory Peck plays a villain in this, and, you know, he, he has played other villains. Mm, let's see. You know, I myself haven't worked on very many, you know, actual productions of, like, movies and such, but I did get to play a villain in some small productions, and it can't be overstated just how much fun you can have playing evil. So, yeah, I, I don't blame him for that. And apparently he also really wanted to work with uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier. And, yeah, but the, the performance still isn't. It's, yeah. Now. So yeah, at first it seems like the Steve Gutenberg character is going to be in more of the movie, and then he's killed off. Yeah, and I wanted to note if that has a strong effect on the audience. I mean, there's it's not nothing, at least. I, I don't know that I would say really strong. And the very ending hints that the Hitler clone, yep, Bobby, who had, you know, that he might be dangerous, does that twist work? I mean, I feel like there is maybe some, ah, what's the word? You know, it, the, the, if you accept the movies, the, the whole, notion in the movie that the let's see yeah the, the notion in the movie that that hitler is being cloned back to life and the you know all this the the yeah i could see the the very ending working for for you know if you're into the yeah. And I do, you know, I appreciate that by the end of the movie, it is clear, like, you know, the other Nazis are shutting the project down because of Lieberman. They're not going to kill him because they're worried that would attract too much attention. And with, yeah, you know, Mengele is the one who's still pushing to do this. But the, uh, you know, so when Mengele leaves to, to, contact Bobby, that's it. That's the, you know, Mengele is the only person who's still trying to make, to, to push through the program. And we've seen right, you know, one of the first things we see in this movie is that when Mengele explains his plan to others, other Nazis, they're actually a little, like, they don't really, think, you know, they, they immediately ask, well, the people we're killing, are they, are they Jewish? Are we, you know, how, how does this help the Aryan race, and when he doesn't, yeah, you know, he is basically the last person who still believes in this thing, so when he dies at the end of the movie, that's it, you know, there is no, like, you know, it's, it's a conspiracy and there are a lot of people involved, so you have to wrap it up with, with this kind of thing, you can't leave something like this, you know, but we do see that, you know, Mengele leaves and, and we see his office, I guess it is, being burnt down so they can get rid of all the evidence. And yeah, they're not going to further pursue it. They're just going to, you know, have their retirement, basically. You know, I've seen movies that build up this conspiracy kind of thing and then they just kind of end and there's no 
it just, yeah, that's, that's really frustrating. I'm not saying, you know, you're allowed to have an open ending, but this is really not the kind of, I, I don't think it would be good for the movie to have an open ending in this, you know, it, when it comes to the, the conspiracy. And yeah, so I found the trailer on YouTube, two minutes, 44 seconds. It's perfectly decent for when it was made and when it was made. Now, let's see. Yeah, they, they really love that dog. That, that sh one shot of the dog, coming to, it, it looks like it's going to eat the camera, you know. And they, yeah, they keep cutting to that. At one point, they do a photo negative effect on it. And is it maybe five times overall that it shows the, the, the it, it looks scary. Don't get me wrong. I'm not disputing that, but it's like, I, I feel like it should have only appeared once in it, if at all. And let's see. Yeah. And it, it ends on the, the ominous line, you know, near, from a, a trailer narrative. Look for the boys in Brazil before they look for you. Which, I mean, yeah, if you're into it, that works, I'm sure. And then I watched this review. Ah, crap, I'm afraid I did not write down. Well, yeah, I, you know, I did a search on the boys from Brazil, and I think I only did find, like, Let's see. I I didn't find very many reviews, but oh, hold on. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna spell out his name. I I like the review so much. I subscribed to him, and I've liked other videos of his since. S i n g l i six. And. You know, he, he points out that the Jewish stereotyping could have been written by Go Go Goebbels? I, Go Goebbels, I think, is how the, the German pronunciation. And he points out that it, that's actually Konal von Strom from Allo Allo being, you know, the, the guy getting run over. I mean, at least Allo Allo was funny on purpose. And he points out that James Mason looks a lot more like Mangala than Gregory Peck does. And yeah, and he calls it a deadpan springtime for Hitler. Points out how ridiculous the Nazi ball is and how ridiculous the the idea of them cloning Hitler is. But ultimately he does like the movie, giving it a three out of five. And I, I can appreciate, you know, again, the movie definitely has some good production to it. And yeah, and then there's this review called by the film Illiterates. And yeah, so they say that the tone is wrong for the Nazi clone thing. The movie should just have been about hunting down the remaining surviving Nazis. I think that's very true. That would have been that would have made for a much better movie. They were very surprised that Mr. Gutenberg was in the movie at all, and that he died so early. Gregory Peck is very over the top and having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah, the the Hitler clones were really annoying. Every time he showed up, he was using phrases that were supposed to be cool when the movie came out, but they're really silly today. One of them thinks doesn't think that it should be called the Boys from Brazil. The other one argues that they were made in Brazil. That's why it's called that, even though they aren't in Brazil. So technically, they're technically German genetically. And one likes the first half of the film. I felt that once they started an acting plan to kill everybody, went off the rails. It was more interesting as a suspense thriller about trying to find the source of Nazi war criminals. I, I agree. The sci-fi aspect didn't work. And yeah, yeah, agreed. And throughout the video, they have these hints that one of the reviewer's roommate might be a Nazi. And at the end of the video, the other reviewer, let's see. Yeah, when he, he finds 
the, the roommate putting on a Hitler mustache and apparently kills him in a way that he gets a lot of blood on his hands. And the other guy then reveals he's playing a Nazi in The Sound of Music musical and he just gets really into character. And... Yeah, I, you know, I, I get they, they needed to have something in a review of the the movie about Hitler clones. They needed to have some kind of joke, you know, but I don't know. I don't know if it was necessarily that funny, but, you know, they, they didn't spend not a lot of the video is devoted to it. I'm really not sure why nearly 50% of people who voted on the video gave it a thumbs down. I don't know. People who like the movie, I guess. I thought it was a, a good review. And then there's a video on YouTube called Mengele's Boys from Brazil, 12 and a half minutes, and goes into research into how realistic the concept of the movie is. And I have no comments. I... I did find the book as an audiobook translated and I think I, I I think I listened to the first through the first 40 minutes of it of a 10 and a half hour book and I just did not I just couldn't get into it and yeah I ultimately bailed on listening through it, through the rest of it. And that brings us to the final section. I'm oh, sorry, Critic Sites, IMDb, and Wikipedia. Yeah, so this is a um, Rotten Tomatoes review, critic review. A film too dopey and campy to be taken seriously, too mordant and sober to be much fun, and too ludicrous and melodramatic to be at all defensible as a social commentary. Very well put. The plot is less suspenseful than the overacting contest between the two leads, Laurence Olivier and Gregory Peck, who spend most of their screen time one-upping each other in affectations. Yeah, this is a Rotten Tomatoes user review. Josef Mengele lived the remainder of his life on the run with his family's money in shacks provided by his ever-shrinking Nazi network. Any attempt, as this movie attempts to do, to make this despicable, lowest form of life sadistic murderer anything more than that is indecent. And I agree, it is, it is fundamentally offensive to try to make it seem as though he would be able to do this even if it do, even if it wouldn't work just the idea that he would be able to do you know these this human cloning that i i realized that he would the the ethical constraints that have that that prevent others from attempting human cloning wouldn't stop him but the movie does say that he succeeded he he did apparently create 94 clones of hitler and it seems like the they were potentially on the way to becoming like hitler yeah it's just but but the um, and and again like hypothetically if you wanted to have a story that explores him trying to do that just have him fail. Have him not be able to clone. You know, either not be able to clone at all, or for the clones to turn out completely differently.
Now, let's see. If ever there was a film that should not take itself seriously, it's this one. Surprisingly campy, but not without merit. I'm sure the twist blew people's minds in the 70s. What could have been a great thriller is mired in sheer preposterousness. And, yeah, I'm just going to briefly read the tagline. If they survive, will we? Which, again, you know, it is this kind of alarmist, like, if Hitler came back, he wouldn't immediately have the, the army and the... the you know, all, all the forces of just, yeah. And this is IMDb Trivia. The story combines two genres that were popular in the 1970s. The conspiracy thriller involving escaped Nazi war criminals, The Odessa File, Marathon Man, The Formula, Golden Girl, did I not watch the Odessa file? Huh. I don't know. I feel, I feel like I have. Anyway. And the horror and science fiction movie involving dangerous children altered by supernatural or scientific means. The Exorcist, The Omen, which also starred Gregory Peck, and The Brood. Oof. I could watch The Brood again. I could definitely go for that. And the evil child genre arguably started with Rosemary's Baby which was also written by Ira Levin. There are other versions of that, aren't there? Maybe I'll watch them at some point. I have, I have a hard time thinking that there can be much better, but there are definitely, like, some... I think there's at least one adaptation of that. You know, when I talk Rosemary's Baby, I'm talking about the 1968 Roman Polanski film. But there are, like... Uh, let me think. What was the... Ah. I think there's at least one that's fairly recent, like maybe the, sometime in the last 10 years or something, and there's definitely some societal changes that that movie, or that adaptation, was it a miniseries maybe, that that could reflect. Yeah, I, th I think I will look at those. Now, let's see. Yeah, and, and the IMDb goofs section, you know, under incorrectly regarded as goofs, points out that in reality, the idea of, you know, getting these clones to become the next Hitler, you know, you, you couldn't recreate all the circumstances and events you know, for for example, the the you know Hitler's experience in World War One. You know him leaving his native country Austria to join another country's army. You know, suffering from mustard gas. Oh, you know there there. Are, yeah, there there are so many, you know that that couldn't be replicated, but the film doesn't show the boys growing up to be like Hitler. So. It's not a flaw of the film, it's a flaw of, of Mengele's plan, you know. And, let's see. Yeah, this, however, is, you know, the, yeah, this is listed as a plot hole, and I, I agree. The central point of the film is that, as well as being exact genetic clones of Adolf Hitler, the boys 
must also grow up in a similar environment, therefore the older father dies at 65, etc. But Hitler was the fourth of six children, three of whom died in childhood, while the boys were all only children, which, yeah, you know, that's actually, that's, I, I read about it once, but I think, yeah, I think that might be why Hitler's mother was so doting, you know, she was so relieved that at least some of the children survived. This is not a big deal, but I'm, it's just a little bit, I don't know, the, the, it's just, it, it makes me smile. Near the end of the movie, approximately an hour and 56 minutes, 28 seconds, as Bobby Wheelock sends the remaining dogs out of the room and says, out, the dead dog, who has been motionless on the floor for most of the scene, picks up his head and twitches his ears, then puts his head back down. Like, the, the poor dog knew, that, like, it, it understood. Oh, is that, is that me? Oh, no, it's not me. Okay, I'll, I'll lay back down. Just, I don't know, that's just... <laughs> dogs are so precious. Just, uh, you know... Now, let's see. And the, yeah, so the memorable quote section has the, the bit where, you know, okay, so his name is Professor Bruckner, and Lieberman talk about Mengele and you know, they, they do both agree that he was a sadist. But Lieberman says he was a sadist with an MD and a PhD, to which Bruckner replies, some people would say the perfect definition of a scientist. And I get that they're saying that... I, I'm not 100% certain if the movie is saying that that is... You know, that that is the definition of a scientist, the perfect definition of a scientist. But just... Again, any, anyone thinking that, you know, just keep in mind, he produced almost nothing of, like, scientific, you know, results. It, it was, yeah. Now. The altercation between Lieberman and Mengele, sorry, this is from Wikipedia, took about three or four days to film due to Olivier's fa sorry, ailing health at the time. What's the difference between ailing and failing? F? Okay. Peck recalled... Yeah, sorry, that one did not land. Sorry. Peck recalled that he and Olivier were lying around on the floor laughing at the absurdity of having to film such a fight scene at their advanced ages. I honestly don't know why they didn't just not have... A, one of them has a gun. You could literally just have that he points the gun and so they both sit down and have the conversation they have and then the dogs attack Peck, which could also, like, potentially be done with a stunt. And it, it's probably possible parts of it were done with a stunt double who didn't have to be as old. Yeah. Now, let's see. Okay. 
Okay, so I am going to go through some. Actually, yeah, that is. Yeah, so those are all my prepared notes. I'm not sure there's anything that I have anything more to add. So let's see. To to go through mentally, I've gone. Yeah, I've gone into the the acting, how it is as a genre piece. I've gone into the the ethics of cloning, the idea of cloning Hitler, and the implications. I think. guess that does pretty well cover everything. But yeah, I mean, if hypothetically, if you drop the thing with the cloning, and it was just, you know, the Steve Gutenberg character discovers where Mengele is with others, and he gets some of the information of it to Lieberman, who then, he, he still has to do the last work of tracking down, and, you know, you could still have him come face to face with Mengele, and maybe, in fact, it would be, like, I mean, like, like I said, there's definitely, we're supposed to take some satisfaction in seeing Mengele, you know, torn apart by dogs, I think there could be some very real satisfaction in finding him in a situation where he really has nothing left and he's accomplished nothing and just honestly maybe yeah maybe when Lieberman finds him Mengele is sort of you know he's like okay fine I won't put up a fight go ahead shoot me and Lieberman says shoot you I have no intention of shooting you you're coming back with me, and you're going to be put on trial. And everyone will know every horrible thing you've done, and you will face justice. You know, and maybe Mengele even pathetically tries to, like, maybe, maybe he, like, reaches... Yeah, like, if hypothetically, if Lieberman has some weapon or something, maybe Mengele tries to you know, tries to jump and lunge at him and get the weapon and then outstep a couple of other, you know, Nazi hunters and all of them have weapons and all of them point their guns at Mengele and he realizes there's, there's nothing. He Actually, yeah, maybe even then he still, like, tries to grab one of the guns and one of them is just like... Oh, for crying out loud, this, this freaking guy, can you believe this guy? This, and just like, hits him in the head with the, with the butt of the gun and like, you know, cut to black and then cut back and he comes to and like, I don't know, I guess it wouldn't be in the courtroom that he would be coming to, but just like, yeah, let, let's say that the, the, you know, he comes to and there's like, He's, he's back in, you know, in, in some Western country and there's, you know, maybe like lawyers, so, you know, some kind of indication of like, you know, yeah. And then like it cuts, ah, let's see, what's the, yeah, you know, it, it let's see. Yeah, so th th maybe, like, hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly 100% how you would. Hmm. Yeah, but anyway, 
the, the very, very last part. No, wait, let's see, yeah. You know, flags out and then comes to, and he's like maybe in a hospital bed, and there's like lawyers, and it's, it's very clear, and he's like really frustrated. Maybe like he covers his face with, with his, his hand, and then like, let's see, yeah, you, and you do like a match cut to, you know, and, and then he, to, to him in the same position, and then he, you know, stops covering his face, and we see that he is now in a courtroom, and just, yeah, and maybe, maybe the very last thing is, like, the, the judge sentencing, sentencing, and, you know, hits the, the ga gavel, yeah, and, and then it ends, you know, and I, I, yeah, I realize now, I did say earlier that I didn't think a, a trial would be enough, but I, if I recall, that was if they didn't change the movie significantly. I'm talking about a significant change in the movie. If the movie as it is, just instead of him being killed by dogs, ended with him on trial, I don't think that would have the same effect. But if you change the movie to, you know, yeah. Now, let's see. Yes. Yeah, that is actually yeah. Just really briefly, I think the movie does a pretty decent job of just like this this slow trickle of information over the course of the movie that we don't know exactly what you know. Only fairly late into the movie do we realize. What's the goal? Why are they killing 94, 65-year-old civil servants, you know, in, in various countries? What's, what are they trying to achieve? And, you know, every so often the movie will, you know, to, to avoid, like, getting boring or something, every so often there'll be a new assassination carried out, or there'll be a new big clue as to what's really going on, discovered by Lieberman or someone, you know. And I, I appreciate the fact, I mean, only by the end of the movie, we've met, is it three, or I guess maybe four, let's see, of, of, the, of the Hitler clones. We've met Bobby there at the end. We meet the one that's apparently got the flu. We meet the one that... Yeah, yeah, sorry. The one with the mirrors. Yeah, I guess it is four total, because then there's the, the kid who won't let the, the other guy in. It's like, you know, we're not at home, or something like that, is what he says. And, yeah, you know, I could imagine a lesser movie might have actually shown, like, a few, I mean, we do get a very brief shot of a few brief shots of the the place where all the all the mothers were in this sort of hospital room you know the the 94 mothers we get a very a couple of brief glimpses of that you know a lesser movie might have tried to make a scene out of that and i don't think that would have worked i think it works well as just we see these brief glimpses you know when Mengele is shining the, the flashlight. A, a lesser movie might have literally shown, like, a, a huge mass of... I also appreciate that the cover isn't that. Although I guess that might be too much of a spoiler. But then some movies do spoil the, the ending on the, on the cover. But yeah, I, I think that, you know, showing that few of the Hitler clones was 
because if they only showed one, then we don't have a basis for comparison. Excuse me, and if they show very many of them, then you know the moment that you stop thinking, start. Excuse me. The moment that you stop to think about it for just a few seconds, it's it becomes ridiculous. You know, ninety four Hitler clones, and that's supposed to like bring in the the Fourth Reich, even though the like the way the world looks today, it's extremely unlikely that a uh, Hitler would like th these are all like. European countries and like America and Canada and such. The the way that these countries look today is nothing like before World War II. You know, after World War II, a lot of Europe, you know, a lot of Western countries became military allies. It's extremely unlikely. Like hypothetically, the Hitler would have to convince the military allies. Or, you know, the military allies might, you know, together try to stop the, that, that one, you know, yeah, it's, it's just really not very, very likely. And anyway, so if you actually saw all 94 clones, or even just like, I think even if it, there was one shot with just a dozen of actual clones, like, there's the one shot with the mirrors, yes, but... If there was a shot, like, and I, I realize obviously it would have to be like an effects shot or something, but hypothetically, let's say they made a, a, you know, a photo, even a still photo, where you see like 12 Hitler clones at age 14 standing next to each other, you know, it would, yeah, we'd, we'd think that's, that's ridiculous, that's, you know, but, yeah. So the, let's see. Hmm. Yes, that pretty well covers. And again, I I think he did a perfectly decent job. I feel like they felt like the you know like they actually were. Ah, what's the word? Like just slightly different from each other. Like hypothetically, if I only saw one of the performances. I'm not sure that I would be like saying, ah, that's not, that's not how that kid normally speaks. You know, I, I don't know how that kid normally speaks because they all seem, you know, decently, like, I figure he, I can imagine that English is probably his first language because he doesn't have a, a thick accent, like, you know, but yeah, but, but that's basically it. And this is a movie where I don't think any of the Germans ever speak German to each other. You know, there's, there are accents in the movie, but I don't think anybody speaks any language other than... Wait, are there... Is there a little bit of... Ah, crap. I guess that's Bra Brazilian? Is there some Brazilian spoken by the, the natives in the scenes? Of, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but... Uh, and anyway, the... the yeah, you know, the, the vast majority is the, the English... And and then you know, yeah, there are a couple of accents for the kid to do, and I feel like he did a, a decent enough job. I'm not sure. Has he been in anything else? A lot of kid actors don't really do anything else once the yeah. Now let's see the. I think that covers everything. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. Yeah, I enjoyed watching. And I definitely enjoyed recording. And I'll catch you next time.